hey, 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 hey! It's Al here. We're going to be talking about making coffee. Yep, this is it. This is the video where I make coffee. Some people like my coffee, and one of the reasons for that is I use a thing called a mocha pot. Now, a mocha pot is an Italian design by a company called Belletti. Uh, I think that's the name of them. This particular one is not. A uh, Belletti, it is a Baccarat. It's extremely cheap. But look, as long as the basic uh, form and function and design are reasonably okay, they should be a fairly reliable unit. There's a few things to look out for. One is the little tiny seal around here should be in reasonably good condition. And decent ones. This one did actually come with an extra seal. Should come with an extra seal. Um, all units should have a little safety valve here. Uh, it's quite important. I'll uh, go into more detail about that later on. And it's also important to have a decent hinge and that the handle is reasonably sturdy because of course you know they're a vessel that's holding quite hot water so you don't really want that to fail on you. Uh, I really enjoy using one of these. So I guess the best thing to do would be to get stuck into making some coffee. Now we're just to talk about some fundamentals here. I've talked about the unit itself. Let's talk about what goes into it. Now I am not a particularly sophisticated coffee drinker. I'm the kind of guy that just gets up in the morning and just wants to put the stove on, coffee to arrive magically. And that's one of the things I feel happens with these units. Very easy. This unit here actually makes two of these little coffee cups. Um, now this is not a group head shot that you'll get out of one of these. This is a uh, this is a real cup of coffee. This is a shot of coffee in Italy. So fantastic. Um, few things to look out for. Um, one of those things is this stuff. This stuff is um, it's freeze dried coffee. I've heard some arguments before that it's not actually coffee. Instant coffee is coffee. It's just freeze dried. Uh, it is. Pretty terrible. Um, I don't think we'll take it much further than that. If you see this, I've got one recommendation for this. In the bin. Right, uh, another thing to look out for, and this has been a bit of technology going on here. This here is a, uh, a coffee pod. Uh, you probably know Nespresso and a lot of those other brands. They uh, often come in like a little plasticky thingy, uh, like this, uh, basically gets, I mean it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's basically the coffee's ready to go and pressurizes one side and shoots the coffee out the other side, it's um, an extremely unenvironmentally friendly way of using plastic, um, as far as I know none of the plastic in these things is ever recycled, I mean it even comes with a stupid little, how much packaging do you need man, like, box, Packet, little plastic thing, one shot of coffee, useless. It's just infuriates me. Today we're going to be using the real stuff. This here is from the Havana Coffee House, uh, no, Havana Coffee Works, and I think it's in Wellington. Now I could be wrong about that. Coffee House Revolution. We'll go with that. Excellent. Now. I, um, I keep my coffee in an uh, airtight container, um, that's the best way to keep your coffee, um, and I put it in the fridge in between uses So stuff. I generally get through about one of these in every two weeks. Quite excited about this coffee, I picked it up, well actually I really, I suppose I, I suppose I kind of, yeah, customs, hope they don't see this video, eh? Anyway, we're going to be making this coffee right here in the smoker pot. So stay tuned, we're going to get some real action happening here. Oh yeah, one thing I just want you to look out for now, I um, now if any of you guys are used to this stuff in the morning, tea, um, look I think tea is great, I'll do a video later on on how to make a decent cup of tea, um, should be good fun, but just put on hold this idea for a while, okay? Um, there's something to be said for making a decent cup of coffee first thing in the morning, and here we go. Right, folks, well here we are in the coffee making process. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about how to put this together. 
Now, just for a start, I, as you can see, we have the coffee here in the basket. Uh, if you can see here, but I've actually filled it to about half. Now, what I've used to grind that is this thing here. Um, this is a coffee grinder. It's a pretty cheap one. It's a little breville. It's all right, you know. What you want to do is you want to grind the coffee so that it's um, just before it turns to like a floury consistency. So you want it just before flour. Um, just below sugar, in between sugar and flour. It's a kind of a, kind of quite a gritty but still powdery kind of a feel. That's the best way you can describe it. How are you supposed to describe that? Um, but once you've got to about to that consistency, um, then you need to fill your reservoir just under the brass valve, which is really important. Um, I actually had one of these explode on me once, which was a little scary. The whole lid and everything flew off because I filled it over the valve and water hammer simply forced the little brass valve out the back of it. Um, yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, what we do then is with the basket half full of coffee, okay, and bearing in mind I've not filled it level. I mean, look, if you want a seriously strong cup of coffee, by all means, do it. I've seen people heap it in these things. And while they're screwing these two units together, like try and tamp it in some kind of weird way. And only does that wreck the filter on the underneath. I mean, uh, this is dumb. Um, what we're going to do is about half. That's a decently strong cup of coffee. Now, to get that effect, I just used two teaspoons, two heaped teaspoons of coffee beans. Okay? It might not seem enough at the time, but once you do it and get all the coffee out of the grinder, you'll find it's just plenty. So, right about half. And place the basket into the reservoir. Then we're going to put the little jug on and tighten it just so it's firm. No point over tightening it, but at the same time it has to be tight enough to make a good seal. Okay? So I just say firm. Okay? Just remember as well if you completely over tighten it. It's going to be really hard to get off later on when this whole thing cools. Okay, right. We're going to stick this on the coffee machine and see what happens. And um, actually, we're going to leave the, the top open and just watch it gently come out. So it should be quite, quite relaxing. Okay, folks, as you can see here, we've got the, uh, the little mocha pot on the element, ready to go. Now, I'm going to turn the heat up to about one third of what the element. Now there are a lot of different ideas on what is the right temperature to start one of these up on. I've seen people put them on full blast and they work really, really quickly, but one of the disadvantages is they get quite splattery. Okay, now I, I've i also seen people put it on about half and it's a little bit quicker, not too fast, and it comes out quite nice. I, for this oven here, the stove top that I'm using here, I have it on about one third and it takes, takes about Oh, about five minutes and it's pretty well sorted. Um, so I'm going to turn it up now. Here I go. That's on one third. And we're just going to watch it. Now, I, it doesn't really matter whether or not the lid is closed or open because it's actually a separate vessel on the underneath. But we're going to keep it open and we're going to actually watch the coffee come out. Okay folks, I think we're about to see the coffee come out of the uh, coffee pot. Now I'll be looking to the center here. You can see that the coffee is beginning to come out. As you can see it's coming out and there's a, what's called a crema forming on the top. There's just uh, little tiny bubbles. Coffee aficionados generally look for that. Um, if it doesn't happen the first couple of times, just keep trying. As you can see it's coming out and looking quite lovely. The crema should be nice and yellow. Now before it starts to bubble, I like to, just when it starts to bubble, I just take it off. Because we don't really want to get the bitter after bits of, the, of uh, what's in the uh, bottom of the coffee pot there. So if we just look in there, let's have a nice, nice little bit of a look. You can see that it's actually quite nice in there. Just a, yeah, quite lovely. So we're, um, we're going to get into uh, drinking that. And um, yeah, this should be good fun. Okay, folks, we're going to get into uh, drinking this coffee. As we can see here, it's in a lovely little little uh, coffee pot. Oh, look at that. It's just amazing. Now, don't expect to have an amazing crema after you've poured it out one of these, even though it might have been there initially. 
One of the reasons for that is that you're secondarily uh, pouring it out of this unit and the crema gets a little bit lost. As you can see, it's actually still in there. Some people, if you want to be really weird about it, you can actually brush that crema off into there, but look, what the hey. The coffee tastes amazing. Now, you can flavor it with a bit of honey or whatever, and um, yeah, whatever it takes really to uh, get you through your morning. I um, don't, don't be too worried if you get it wrong the first couple of times. It, it took me about a good week to start getting coffee right out of this thing when I first got one. Um, because, because, remember as well, because it's actually a small little coffee pot as well, it's really good if you're the only coffee drinker in your house, you know, uh, and they, they don't smell too bad, um, you know, uh, sometimes more sensitive people in your house might be not like that smell of coffee first thing in the morning. Well, this is pretty easy to clean really fast before it stinks out the house, so, um, other than that, have a, uh, have a lovely morning. <laughs>